Hey guys, my name is Zach, CEO of RV Defender. Today I'm going to show you what it takes to install this RV Defender product on your trailer. Obviously you're going to need some tools, channel locks, wire cutters, the box and wrenches, 9 16 half inch, 7 16 everyone's got these, a couple hammers, a couple sockets, and an eighth inch allen bit. You got it. Makes life easier. And this is what comes in the box. We got precision cut laser, eighth inch steel plate. Four reinforcement brackets, the main backing plate itself. Again, precision cut CNC bent uh, L brackets. And then the all important fender. Look at that, precision. Okay, here's where it takes it going. Obviously we got a display here. This works better for us to show you exactly how this is gonna work. But on your trailer, you're gonna get uh, the floor jack, pick it up off the ground, pull wheels and tires off. Jack stands are important. First and foremost step, take a dead blow hammer and uh, knock this uh, dust cap off. Sometimes I get a little, little high. Okay, grab your trusty wire cutters, pull the cotter pin out, set it aside, shine a lot of pliers, open that up a little bit. So we loosen that, pretty simple. Hold the entire drum assembly off and set aside. Now, grab the sheathing provider in your hardware package, find the end, kind of open it up with your fingers, locate the wires that are uh, hooking the brakes into the axle, simply start over and roll the sheathing over the wires. Not necessary to cut these wires. Do not cut these wires. Okay, here's a time saving tip. Take your impact gun, 916 socket, take this nut off. Grab the hammer. Knock that nut out. Be uh, very careful not to hit the spindle at all. We provide these fancy new studs. So notice the double end stud. Take the side that's got the splines on it, feed it through the back side. Take a half inch open end wrench. Hold the stud to where it's in a star pattern, meaning that the, uh, the, the wrench is coming out at, uh, what's that, 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock? Put the, uh, the factory nut back on, the factory nut. Line it up by hand. You take your 3 8 ratchet, you just thread that nut on, it'll start at the bottom out. So once it gets tight, get some resistance on it. Just pull, keep cranking on it, crank on it, crank on it. You see on the back side, the stud will see it flush against the, the mounting flange. Repeat that step on all five and you're good to go. Okay, now that you got all five studs pulled through, we do provide you with these center locking nuts. You'll notice there's a little divot on, on the side of the nut. This is a grade eight nut with a locking uh, washer. Take the sock nut back off the, the, the studs we provided after they've been flush mounted. Simply line these nuts up. They're a little bit thick, finicky, so be careful not to cross thread them going in. Start them by hand, a little resistance. Again, using a, a 3 8 ratchet. Do not use your impact gun on these. And tighten down, tail snug. Repeat that step on all five. Okay, now that you got all studs and the sheeting installed on your axles, you're gonna wanna orient how these install. Again, these backing plates, they are the same backing plate for passenger side and driver side, but the entire assembly is clocked rearward to allow for more clearance between the tires. So these, these ones go on first. You're gonna wanna, wanna look at these five holes as they make a star pattern. Uh, taking the, the top one would be straight up. Noticing that this piece is clocked rearward. We'll take this over to the axle. And we'll line them up on these holes, being careful to Route that wire right through the sheeting that you installed earlier. And simply all over the studs. Take the mirror image. And push them over the studs. Piece of cake. We'll provide you with some 3 8 by 1 inch carriage bolts. You'll take those carriage bolts. You want to start them on this first uh, reinforcement plate. Simply feed them through. And we 
repeat on all four holes right now. I'll take the main back in place. Again, being careful to align it. That's the same orientation. See, this way it's the wrong way. So if you turn around the other way, and we'll line on the, on the five studs. And the carriage bolts, you just put in a moment ago. Fill bracket, same thing. So you can line it up on the studs and the carriage bolts. Make sure you get them oriented to where they, all the holes line up properly. Push the carriage bolts through. Just enough where you can get the nuts started on the bolts. And ready for the next step. Now that you've got all the studs lined up and the carriage bolts installed, I like to start with the carriage bolts. Take the nylock 3 8 16 coarse thread nuts and put them on the carriage bolts. Again, just start them by hand. And then finally provided 3 8 24 fine thread locking nuts for the, for the studs. Repeat that on all studs. Now that you've done, completed the process with the carriage bolts and the lower stud nuts, take the upper carriage bolt, push it through the top, from the outside in, line that up, go hand tight. Now that all the nuts are hand tight, be careful to watch the, the intersection lines here that are, that are in place where they're supposed to be, and simply start to tighten by hand. I like to start from the outside in. It just seems to hold things, hold things together a little bit better. Obviously, you guys will be under the trailer when installing these. So you'll be work, uh, getting around leaf springs and various other components. Um, but it can be done, not bad. Okay, this is what it's going to look like when it's all ready to go. Uh, obviously, you guys may have a leaf spring right in this area, so it might be a little bit tricky to get a socket on it. Open end wrench works great, but you see how it looks. Coming from the back side, you see that whole backing plate is already turned rearward, so this particular would be on the passenger side trailer. Okay, now that the backing plate's installed, we're going to start on the L brackets. I like to start on the top. You'll find this L bracket, the one that has eight holes on the top, four on the back. Take your quarter inch by uh, three quarter inch carriage bolts, go from the wheel side inward, align that with the, with the nut on the uh, up L bracket, hand tighten with those nuts, and repeat that process in all locations. Now we're doing our lower L brackets, front and rear brackets are the same, so it doesn't matter what side they go on. Simply line them up with the, uh, the quarter inch square holes. Use the quarter inch provided carriage nuts or bolts. Sometimes they're a little bit uh, stubborn to get into. And can continue that step on the next ones. Okay, now that the L brackets are on, again, hand tight. Do not tighten them with the wrench yet. We are ready for the fenders. Keep important note, sometimes you gotta, you gotta align these holes a little bit. You get a, an awl or a, a small punch to help align them. Or if you can uh, loosen these a little bit, shift it in place, they'll go right in. Now all these L brackets are on hand tight. We're gonna locate the fenders. 
You'll locate the uh, quarter inch by three quarter inch button head bolt with a shallow lock nut. It's always easiest to start at the top. So I like to put the bolts in there. I'll line it up with the appropriate hole. Start the nut on the bottom. And continue that process for all holes. Okay, now we're not working on getting the other second half of the fender installed. Again, I like to throw the top. Use the, the bolts closest to the opposite fender. Start with those. Kind of roll the fender into it. Line out the inside holes. Get the nut started. And simply chase them through. By hand. Take again the shallow lock nuts. Start from the bottom. And just start threading them from the bottom up. Again, do not tighten them at this point. Now that we've got all four uh, top nuts and bolts started, let's so move down to the bottom. Simply take the nut, line it up as, by side as close as you can. Push it through. Start throwing the nut on the inside out. And repeat that step on all three, all the remaining holes. Okay, now that we have all the nuts and bolts hand tight, take a 7 16 wrench, or I'm sorry, socket, and a 7 8 inch Allen key, hold on the button head, and tighten from the nut side back. If you try and tighten from the Allen head side, you will strip the bolt. It does not make sense to do that. And repeat on all of them. Okay, there you go at this point. Go in, tighten up all the 7 16 nuts on the inside. Tighten up all the 17 6 cents on the back side. Double check all these 9 16 cents are tight. And that product is installed. Okay, now that the RV fender, the fender is installed, the fender will be installed the drum. Simply line it up. Be careful not to damage the seal. Push the bearing in place. Put the washer and the lock nut. Line it up. Thread it on. Until it seats. I like to spin the spin the drum until it gets put some pressure on it. Once there's some pressure on it, take it back about an eighth of a turn to where the cotter pin lines are. Cotter pin, we drop it in. Grab the wire cutters at the bottom of it. Fold it up around, just like it was the, when we started. Grab your dust cap, line it up. Again, dead blow hammer. You can it in place. We here at RV Defender highly recommend in repacking your bearings whenever you install these. But now that is done, and moving on to the next.